Hello, Colin McLaughlin here for WRNR and TV10 on Comcast, as well as our WRNR TV on YouTube. We're here at the Berkeley County Youth Fair, and it's time for the Goat Show. Hope you enjoy. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hear at the twilight's last gleaming his bright stripes and bright stars through the barrel of fight or the ram but we watch where so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bond bursting in air gave birth to the night the other flag was still there oh say does that star spangled All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. We thank you for letting everyone come out and support us today and support the youth fair. Please give us strength and courage to come out and show today, Lord. We thank you all for the blessings you've given us this year and letting us be together and have a great time. Please keep everyone safe today and let everyone have a great time. In your name I pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow, what a wonderful way to start off the GOAT show at the Monday morning Berkeley County Youth Fair. I'd like to welcome everyone and the exhibitors. If class one and two can be making their way to the arena, please. To start off today, we'd like to introduce to you our judge for the day, Mr. Chris Mackey. Chris is the owner and operator of Team Mackey Livestock located in Irwin, Tennessee. He, along with his sister and brother-in-law, run a small group of Simital and Angus cattle in addition to their weather style ewe flock. Chris was an active 4-H and FFA member and has always had a passion for the livestock and show industries. Chris graduated from the University of Tennessee and was a member of the 2012 Collegiate Livestock Judging Team at UT. Following graduation, he attended North Carolina State as a graduate research and teaching assistant as well as the coach for the Collegiate Livestock Judging Team. Currently, Chris serves as the County Extension Director for Unicoi County, Tennessee, with a focus in agriculture and 4-H and youth development. Welcome, Chris. Without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. If we can have exhibitor number 402, Shelby Silvius, come on in the ring. This is your previous winner's showmanship class.
Class 2 senior, or, yeah, senior showmanship can be making their way to the arena, please. If you are a first year goat exhibitor, you may want to take the opportunity to come on up and watch this class as well as the next couple classes to get an idea of what you should be doing. This previous winner's class obviously is made up of those who have already won showmanship for their age groups and the overall. Well, first off, it certainly is a pleasure to be asked to come to West Virginia. I think the last time I got to the opportunity to sort here was at a jackpot in the middle of the state, and I didn't think I was going to get there because it was flooding. So we're already starting off on the right foot here with some beautiful weather. Uh, it's, it's definitely not this nice and cool down in Tennessee yet, but uh, really looking forward to working through your goats and your uh, kids and sheep later on today. But I you know, we've got one individual here in our previous winner's class, and I think she does a really, really nice job. If you're standing ringside, I think I'd take some notes on her intensity, how smooth she is, and gets that goat stuck. Obviously, that big doe's not wanting to cooperate 110%. The young lady said she uh, is kind of her backup replacement, but I think it's a pretty good backup replacement. So we'll see her back here in just a little bit with a little bit more competition. Let's give this young lady a big round of applause as she goes out. Congratulations to Shelby Silvius from Hedgesville FFA. She received a silver bowl sponsored by Max and Hope Kingery. Our next class is Senior Showmanship. We have this broke down into two groups. Group one would be Brennan Alt, Kaylee Bittery, Caroline Cook, Faith Fox, Brianna Lowe, Emma McCulley, and Alicia Schilt. This is your class, Judge. Group two of senior showmanship, please make your way to ringside.
If you're sitting ringside and see a variety of goats in the ring and wonder what the judge or how the judge is judging this class, this is a showmanship class. So it's not judged on the goat as much as it is on the kid and how that 4-H or FFA member is presenting that specific animal based on its style and age. Since there are two heats of senior showmanship, the judge has his choice of how many he would like to bring back out of this class and the next group for the overall senior showman.
I'm going to go ahead and bring these three young ladies back here for a champion senior showman. Uh, went through over here, told these kids some things that I thought they did really, really good, a few things they could change to come back in for a final drive. Uh, but congratulations. We'll see how these three stack up here in just a second. Coming back from our first group of senior showmen would be Brennan Alt, Brianne Lowe, and Alicia Schlipp. Thank you very much. Good job, ladies. You three, I need you to stay ringside, please. For Oops. Did you give me the wrong number? Yeah, I think it's a good one. I stand corrected on that. Coming back from that first group of senior exhibitors would be Brennan Alt, Brianna Lowe, and Emma McCulley. Coming in as our second group of senior showmen, which includes Reese Barrett, Peyton Dugan, Anna Grove, Abigail Horn, Haley McKinney, Kelsey Payne, and Ian Purdy. This is your class, Judge.
attention all GOAT exhibitors, please pay attention to where we are in the schedule for the show to make sure that you are ready and at ringside when it's time that you do not miss your class. I want to keep this same pattern. I went ahead and selected these three young ladies to come back for a champion lineup. Another good show, a set of showmen on this side. A few things that we could work on for the next time, but there's some other things that they do good as well. We've talked about that individually, but let's give them a big round of applause as they go out of the ring. Returning for the overall senior showmanship drive from this group would be exhibitor number 41, Reese Barrett, exhibitor 38, Peyton Dugan, and exhibitor 162, Kelsey Payne. Coming in the ring now would be returning our three exhibitors from the first group of senior showmen. Brennan Alt from Spring Mills FFA, Emma McCulley, Spring Mills FFA, and also Alicia Schlitt from Spring Mills. Oh. Correction again. Brennan Alt, Brianna Lowe, and Emma McCulley from the first group. Reese Barrett, Peyton Dugan and Kelsey Payne from the second group. This is your overall senior showmanship. All intermediate goat exhibitors, please make your way to your goat. Class one of intermediate showmanship can be making their way to the ringside, please.
I think all six of these young ladies definitely deserve to be out here in this championship lineup. You can definitely tell that they've done their homework at home. All of their animals are pretty calm, collected, uh, and, and for the most part are, are playing that team effort because, let's be honest, showmanship is, in fact, a team effort. I went ahead and pulled these three young ladies over here. A few things that, you know, individually we said, man, they've done really, really great at a few things they could work on uh, maybe to get a little bit higher uh, in this top three contention because these three young ladies over here I think have been the most consistent not only from their heat but particularly they're ramping up that heat here and individually I'll tell you how I see them individually the young lady that's uh, in the first of the lineup on the, my far right side I just like how poised she is she's very calm and she's very collected you know at times that doe doesn't want to just get out and reach and go you take the time to make sure that she's continual, uh, having that continual motion going around the ring. And I really like how you get that feet square planted as best as she can. Now, one thing I want you to work on is the front end of that dough. Sometimes she wants to get a little bit front heavy, try and pick that dough up a little bit more. Even show off bracing that dough a little bit. I don't think I've caught you bracing that dough, but maybe once. Not saying you have to brace the entire time because obviously you're showing a breeding dough, but just show that skill that you have off and that's your ability to do that just so me, the judge, or whomever knows that you can actually, and in the brace, get that female stuck like that. The young lady here with the hair dough is working a little bit harder to get this dough stuck. Sometimes she wants to not cooperate 110%. You want to take a few more turns, uh, maybe than ideal. And that's kind of where I want you uh, to work differently, young lady. Instead of turning super sharp, make nice long turns, okay? You're kind of wanting her to do like a cutting horse uh, or a, a reining horse and pivot on that foot. When you make those shortcuts, go ahead, lead out a little bit more, let her stretch her legs and get her more lined up. That way you're not having to pull her back in. But in terms of your eye contact, your uh, ring presence, and your poise, I think you do a fantastic job. The young lady out here on the end, I'm not a huge fan of this robot arm. I, I like it a little more natural. That's being really critical because I think you're very smooth. You have really good ring presence and really good eye contact. Uh, you do a great job of getting that feet stuck where they need to be. You're constantly checking her, the person in front of you. Again, when that doe moves, she, doe moves, she looks, she gets them uh, stuck where she needs to be. I would tell you the same thing as well on that other lady, uh, the, the lady in the front. Brace that doe every once in a while just so we can show off that skill with that animal. Don't have to brace the entire time because I think you do a really good job and you have a really great team and great, great, team and great chemistry. Um, I'm going to go and select your first through your third over here, but let's give all of these exhibitors in this senior drive a big, big round of applause. Winning your senior showmanship drive would be Miss Peyton Dugan from Spring Mills FFA. She receives a $35 check from Farmers and Mechanics Insurance, $15 from Shady Grove Farm, Mark Oren Family, as well as show supplies from Misty Meadows Farm, the Greg Foster Family. Your reserve champion senior showman would be Reese Barrett from Spring Mills FFA. Reese receives $10 from Harry and Dorothy Snow, as well as show supplies from Misty Meadows Farm, the Greg Foster family. And your third place senior showman will be Brennan Alt from Spring Mills FFA, receiving $5 from the shop 304 LLC. Coming in the ring next would be your first heat of your intermediate showmanship class. This would include Dirks Brown, Chloe Craighead, Bo Dugan, Grace Dunham, Paige Knott, Savannah McDonald, Bailey Reardon. Class two of intermediate showmanship, please make your way to ringside. This is your class judge.
Attention in the goat barn. Attention in the goat barn. Will Lillian Doyle please come to ringside with your goat, please? Lillian Doyle to ringside.
different class, same routine. We've talked through these four individuals on the things that they've done really good at, a couple of things they could work on to get selected to come back. We're going to bring these three young ladies back for a champion intermediate. Give them a big round of applause. Returning from your first group of intermediate showmen would be exhibitor number 107, Dirks Brown, exhibitor number 37, Paige Knott, and exhibitor number 7, Bailey Reardon. Congratulations to all showmen. Stand corrected again. Exhibitor returning would be Dirks Brown. Returning, Paige Knott, Savannah McDonald, and Bailey Reardon. Entering the ring now would be group number two of your intermediate showmen, Taryn Boyles, Lillian Doyle, Garrett Glassford, Corinne Lewis, Destiny Lowe, Maggie Reiner, and Michael Shane. Group three of your intermediate showmen needs to be making your way to ringside, please.
ask these two gentlemen over here to come back for a championship lineup. But these individuals over here also did some really good things. A few things they could work on, but let's give all these kids some love as they exit the ring. Returning from your second class of intermediate showmen would be exhibitor number 208, Taryn Boyles from Valley Star 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners. Give them all another round of applause. Entering the ring now would be your third class of intermediate showmen, including McKaylee Brown from Swan Pond 4-H Club, Ella Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club, Caitlin Saja from Valley Star 4-H Club, Amelia Dugan from Scrabble Scrambles, Casey Payne from Wetumpka 4-H Club, Mackenzie Phoebus from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club, and Chloe Sloanacre from Valley Star 4-H Club. That is your class, Judge. At ringside, we need those selected to return from class one and two from your intermediate showmanship classes. That would include Paige Knott, Savannah McDonald, Bailey Reardon, Taryn Boyles, and Garrett Glassford. Attention all goat exhibitors, please do not forget that there is a grab and go breakfast on the front porch of the goat barn. Please help yourself.
some really great showmen that we've left on this side that, uh, you know, goats just aren't giving their 110% effort today, which is unfortunate. And we're going to ask these two young ladies to come back for a championship lineup here in just a second. Again, give all these kids a big round of applause on an awesome, awesome job. Returning from this class to the championship drive would be exhibitor number 111, Ella Collis from Valley Star. And exhibitor number 155, Caitlin Saya, also from Valley Star. Congratulations to all exhibitors. You may exit the ring. Now we are ready for our overall intermediate showmanship drive. This would include Paige Knott from Scrabble Scramblers, Savannah McDonald from Watompka 4-H Club, Bailey Reardon from Musselman FFA, Taryn Boyles from Valley Star 4-H Club, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners, Ella Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club, and Caitlin Saya from Valley Star 4-H Club. The Grand Champion Intermediate Showman will receive $35 from Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company, $15 from Shady Grove Farm, Mark Orr and Family, as well as show supplies from Misty Meadows Farm, the Greg Foster Family. Reserve Champion Intermediate Showman will receive $10 from Harry and Dorothy Snow and show supplies from Misty Meadows Farm, the Greg Foster family. The third place Intermediate Showman will receive $5 from the Shop 304 LLC. All junior goat exhibitors, please make your way to your goats if you're not already in the goat barn. And class one of junior showmanship exhibitors, please make your way to ringside.
I think this is a really deep, really good set that we have here in this next division. And I went ahead and pulled these three or these four over here. These are my top three showmen. The young lady on my far right, I think you do a superb job in terms of being really quick and efficient about getting your dough stuck and planted. When she stops, you know, she doesn't move. What I want you to work on is the front end of this dough. She wants to get a little more forward and down headed, pick her neck up accentuate her front end assembly just a little bit better and then you kind of slouch over as well you don't have to do that uh, you know it's kind of an attention thing a little bit but just stand up there with good posture you know you don't have to stand all the way out here all the time at the same time don't crowd your goat because I got you know told some individuals that's what I told them you've got your space Doe's got her space but just kind of stand up there in a nice natural posture show the front end off of that doe as well the young lady does a really good job here in the middle of that ring presence her eye contact the way she maneuvers around the ring as well at times that doe wants to be a nickel bit too up underneath herself stretch her legs out but I like how you work the front end of that goat I like how you stand and and you show your doe off as well the young man that's got the red doe here on the far end I tell you from the first time he walked in that kind of innate killer instinct that he had and that eye contact that he has I think that's something that's really really you know kids either have it or he doesn't you've got it young man and every time that you get that thing stopped and planted she looks the exact same way every single time if I want to critique you though that does nose wants to get up in the air just a little bit try and rotate her head down get that nose more parallel with her back line but other than that, like I said, you're very uh, efficient, very consistent, and one of the first ones to get that dose stuck when we're on the profile or on side by side. Um, you know, I think uh, this is a great set of kids. Like again, I'm going to select your first through third. Let's give all these kids a big round of applause. Your grand champion intermediate showman goes to exhibitor number 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. Reserve champion would go to exhibitor number 37, Paige Knott from Scrabble Scramblers. And your third place intermediate showman would be exhibitor number 70, Bailey Reardon from Musselman FFA. Congratulations to all exhibitors. Garrett will be returning in a little bit for the overall showmanship. Enter, entering the ring right now would be class number six, your first group of junior showmen. These exhibitors are nine to 11 years old, and many of them, it might be their first year exhibiting a goat. Your first class consists of Grayson Anderson from Arden 4-H Club, Julianne Cook from Tomahawk 4-H Club, Trent Dunham, from Back Creek Valley Mountaineers 4-H Club, Gabriella Emmerich from Sulphur Springs 4-H Club, Austin Jordan from Tomahawk 4-H Club, and Colin Severance from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club. This is your class, Judge. Hey, Sarah. Class two of Junior Goat Showman, please make your way to ringside. Class two of Junior Showmanship, make your way to ringside. At the conclusion of, your, of the overall champion showman, we will need all champions and reserve champion showmen to ringside for pictures, please. Again, at the conclusion of the overall showmanship drive, we will need grand and reserve showmen from each age division to ringside for pictures.
If you're just joining us today, our judge for the day is Mr. Chris Mackey. He is the owner and operator of Team Mackey Livestock located in Irwin, Tennessee, where they raise Semitol and Angus cattle in addition to their weather style ewe flock.
We're going to ask these three individuals over here to return for a champion junior championship. And then these three did some really good things, a few things we could work on. Uh, but let's give them a big round of applause as they go out of the ring. Returning for your overall junior showmanship drive would be exhibitor number 148, Julianne Cook from Tomahawk 4-H Club. Exhibitor number 119, Gabriella Emmerich from Sulphur Springs 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 67, Austin Jordan from Tomahawk 4-H Club. Again, give these exhibitors a round of applause. Entering the ring now would be our second class of junior showmen, including exhibitor 16, Grant Bulliard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club, exhibitor number 74, Brady Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club, exhibitor 326, Jackson Haddock from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club, exhibitor 59, Allison Quintana from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club, and exhibitor number 83, Brian Van Dyne from Swan Pond 4-H Club. This is your class, Judge.
ask these two gentlemen to come back for our championship lineup. But these three kids did a really good job as well. Some things that they needed to do a little differently to get uh, over here. But let's give them some love as they exit out of the ring. Returning to the Grand Showmanship Junior Drive would be exhibitor number 16, Grant Boyard, and exhibitor number 74, Brady Collis. Put your hands together for all these exhibitors. She'll probably run now. Entering the ring now would be your five showmen competing for your junior champion showmen, including exhibitor number 148, Julianne Cook from Tomahawk 4-H Club, exhibitor number 119, Gabriella Emmerich from Sulphur Springs 4-H Club, exhibitor number 67, Austin Jordan from Tomahawk 4-H Club, exhibitor 16, Grant Bulliard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club and exhibitor number 74, Brady Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club. <laughs> the overall junior champion showman will be receiving $35 from Harry and Dorothy Snow, $15 from Nicholas Abereg, Equitable Advisors, as well as show supplies from Misty Meadows Farm, the Greg Foster family. The reserve champion junior showman will be receiving a $10 award from Nicholas Abereg, Equitable Advisors, as well as show supplies also sponsored by Misty Meadows Farm, the Greg Foster family. Third place will be receiving a $5 award from Nicholas Abereg, Equitable Advisors. If the champion junior showman Champion Intermediate Showman and Champion Senior Showman could be making their way to ringside, please. Attention in the barn, we need Peyton Dugan and Garrett Glassford to ringside, please. Peyton Dugan and Garrett Glassford to ringside.
These juniors certainly are bringing the heat, and I think we've got a good championship lineup out here. These are my top three individuals over here. The gentleman on my far right, he just does a really, really good job on the front end of that dough, keeping that one's head up, always in a constant state of motion. Here we're getting a little bit too lax on where those feet want to be placed, bud, but I think you've been the most consistent about trying to get that big beast squared up presented where she needs to be. You get out in front of that dough as well. Maybe put your feet together a little bit. Don't stand like this. There you go, good job. Uh, the gentleman in the middle, I think he does a really nice job of getting that weather stuck and planted. You definitely tell that you are enjoying yourself. Occasionally I'll see you smile. I, I enjoy that and, and appreciate the work that you put into him. A Couple of times he wants to duck down work on getting his neck up and extended. Uh, he wants to get in a little bit front or front and just work on that, getting a little bit better brace on him, okay, bud? The gentleman over here on my far, I like that intense look that he has, that drive, that, you know, that willpower that, you know, say, hey, look at me. I like how you work the front end of that go. Uh, sometimes you want to pop her up, and when you pop her up, she wants to get a little bit wonky. Go ahead and try and fix her feet and plant them square where they need to be, and then go in for the kill and brace on that dough, okay? Um, or just be a little bit more gentler about how you pop that dough up, because like I said, sometimes when you jerk right hard, those feet get out of place. But right now, she looks really, really good. Um, again, top to bottom, I'll pick your champion, second, and then third. Let's give all these showmen a big, big round of applause. Congratulations to your grand champion junior showman, exhibitor number 74, Brady Collis. <laughs> Reserve champion junior showman would be exhibitor number 16, Grant Boyard. And third place junior showman would be exhibitor 67, Austin Jordan. Again, congratulations to all junior exhibitors. We are now ready for class eight, which is your overall grand champion showman. This would include your champion senior showman, which would be Peyton Dugan from Spring Mills FFA. Your intermediate champion showman, which would be exhib uh, exhibitor 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. And we'll be bringing back exhibitor number 74, your junior champion showman, Brady Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club. The winner of this class will compete with your previous winner in the next class with, for the round robin preliminary showmanship. We will need all champion, reserve champion, and third place showmanship winners to ringside with your goats, please, for pictures. A Again, all champion, reserve, and third place showman to ringside with your goat for pictures.
We will need Shelby Silvius to ringside for class nine for the round robin preliminary showmanship. The preliminary showmanship class will include the champion overall showman from this class competing against the previous winner's champion. I think it's pretty cool that you select an overall showman. Uh, you know, back home, we actually don't have our own respective county fair, which is unfortunate. And uh, I think it's really uh, awesome to get the opportunity to come and sort things like this that uh, have these specialty classes like this. The, the junior champion, you know, we talked about, you know, how well he'd done in his heat. And I think he holds his own out here. I, he's going to give some run for his money as he even gets older. But that does want to get a little bit hot, wants to wear down a little bit. But you do a really good job of fixing that dough back where she needs to be, getting her planted and getting her squared. What I want you to work on, though, particularly now, is... Um, if I'm on one side, you need to be on the opposite side, so just go ahead, maneuver to the opposite side, particularly when we're looking at the front end of those does. But again, buddy, you do a really, really nice job. The gentleman that came out and won that Intermediate Showmanship, we talked about him, how just super consistent he was, and every look that you had on that doe was the exact same time. Again, work on getting that nose down just a little bit, but in terms of the innate killer drive instinct of you know in it to win it type mentality I definitely get that vibe from you and it clicks and I really really like it the young lady that won the senior showmanship just so smooth I love how she works the front end of that dough how she steps from one side to the opposite she's very pleasant you know at times maybe that dough just wants to get a little front heavy and if she did done that yep just show that dough front end off just a little bit pick her up a little bit now here she's wanting to Ag get a little agitated. Uh, you don't have to pick her all the way up. Um, but uh, I think you do a superb job as well. Give all these kids a big round of applause and I'll show them. Your, o Your overall champion, grand champion showman for the day would be Mr. Garrett Glassford. He receives a banner sponsored by Nicholas Abereg Equitable Advisors, as well as a rotating plaque sponsored by the Floor family. Entering the ring now will be our class nine, which will be our round robin preliminary showmanship winners. This is a competition between your previous showman, Shelby Silvius, and your recently awarded overall grand showman, Garrett Glassford. This is a new class this year. The winner of this class qualifies to compete and represent the GOAT barn in the round robin showmanship contest which will be on Thursday August 5th at 6 p.m. if you're not familiar with the round robin showmanship this is where the winner of this class will compete against the winners of a similar class from the beef barn the dairy barn the sheep barn the hog barn and they will have to show all five species they to compete for the overall round robin showmanship contest. So if you're around on Thursday evening, join us here in the um, show arena again for some more fun competition. I need all first grand reserve and third place showman from the senior, intermediate, and junior showmanship to ringside for pictures, which will happen right at the conclusion of this class.
apologize for taking a little bit extra time in showmanship, but in our family particularly, you know, showmanship is extremely crucial. And in my opinion, it kind of, you know, evens the playing field out a little bit. You don't have to have the shiniest, prettiest animal out there. What you have to do is be the best showman. And there's obviously a reason why these two individuals out here, the, the, the drive that both of these people give off, you know, that vibe that I'm reading off of them, that competitive look that they have, both of these individuals have that. And kudos to you for winning last year, young lady. I can obviously see why you're out here in this particular class. Unfortunately, though, today it's a team effort, right? Showmanship is all about how the animal works with the individual. And young lady, obviously, you know, this is your backup option. I hate whatever happened at home, but I have to evaluate with what I'm given today. The best team out here is the intermediate champion, overall champion. Congratulations to the round robin preliminary showmanship winner, which would be Mr. Garrett Glassford. He will be coming back to compete in the round robin showmanship on Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Okay, we are now ready to start our non-dairy breeding goat show. Our first class will include goats born on or after February 1st, 2021. These are all does, which are female goats. Um, our exhibitors will include exhibitor number 85, Brennan Alt from Spring Mills FFA, exhibitor 16, Grant Boyard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club, exhibitor number 111, Ella Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club, exhibitor 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. Exhibitor 37, Paige Knott from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 15, Emma McCulley, Spring Mills FFA. Exhibitor 205, Savannah McDonald, Wetumpka 4-H Club. Exhibitor 70, Bailey Reardon from Musselman FFA. And Exhibitor 179, Maggie Reiner from Southern Cross 4-H Club. In these next several classes, the judge will be looking at the animal, uh, looking at the quality of the animal, the cutability of the animal, because these are meat goats producing goats that would go into the food industry. So it's not as much judged on the exhibitor, but on the animal. Class two of non-dairy senior kids born between August 1st and January 31st need to be making your way to ringside, please. Class two of non-dairy breeding goats make your way to ringside.
like I said, we took a little extra time in showmanship, but you know, I, I think it's important to give every single kid an equal opportunity look, you know, to, to have that opportunity out there to showcase their projects. We're going to pick up the pace and move a little bit quicker here as we get into our confirmation classes. And man, I tell you what, this is an awful impressive way to start off this show with this solid red dough. Not only is she next level in terms of her profile, you get your hands on her, she's big back, she's big ended, and I just love that quality look and presence that she has. Not only when she's stuck, but she's so show pony like when she gets out and shows herself off on the move. We've just got a real big meat type dough here in second and I really appreciate that round rib cage she has. She's probably one of the burlier legged ones in this class and I really like that. She maybe wants to take that extra muscle and width to uh, a little bit of the extreme. She's not quite as youthful or as good particularly in her head and her jawline but I definitely think one that's deserving to be up here in this top two spot. I really like the profile and three quarter view that I get on this dough that's going to be in third today. I think you study that one from the side and when she gets out on the goes, that one more closely mimics our class winner from a present standpoint. It's just when we get right directly behind him and on top of that one, that one just gets a little more A-framed, a little more peaked right there in her rack and her loin. The one that's going to be in fourth is a really broody type female, big chested, big bodied, big ended. That one just wants to get a little bit different and couple and particularly how she lets down from her neck into her scapula wants to get a little bit longer and rounder out of her hip as well. The one that's in fifth is one that I really like from a youthful standpoint. I like how long she is. I like how attractive she is to her front end assembly. I like that underline in her as well. That one just needs some more meat animal shape for me to place her any higher in this class. We've got some does over here that I just went ahead and selected them on body dimension. And, you know, that dapple fronted doe is one that kind of, that was pretty close between her and fifth. I just read her to be a little bit coarser about her neck and not near as neat in the way she's tucked in into her chest in relation to her rear flank. The saddleback doe is one that's really useful. Honestly, if this one had a little bit more age, a little bit maturity, I could easily see that one sliding up a couple of notches because the way that she's built is really, really good. She's just too youthful and too green at this stage right now. The black doe, uh, or the black ended doe that we've got right there, she's really long, extended, high altitude type of goat. Another one that just needs some more meat animal shape to her. And we've got one on the round side of this class. Obviously, I would imagine that one's probably one of the youngest in the class, giving up some size and maturity. But I think you keep feeding on that one. That one's just going to blow up, hopefully, because it's actually got a really big pin set, really wide at the ground as well. Nice job to all these exhibitors. Winning the class would be exhibitor number 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. Second would be Savannah McDonald from Wetumpka 4-H Club. We will need both of you to stay ringside for the champion Junior Doe. Third in the class was Grant Boyard from Appalachian 4-H Club. Fourth was Emma McCulley from Spring Mills 4-H Club. And fifth was Ella Collis from Valley Star. Give them all another round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you, exhibitors. <laughs> Presenting our awards today would be 2021 Berkeley County Youth Fair Queen, Miss Carolyn Cook. Entering the ring now will be class two, your non-dairy senior kids, born between August 1st, 2020 and January 31st, 2021. 
Exhibitors include exhibitor number 85, Brennan Alt from Spring Mills 4H FF, or excuse me, Spring Mills FFA. Exhibitor 41, Reese Barrett from Spring Mills FFA. Exhibitor 111, Ella Collis from Valley Star 4H Club. Exhibitor 61, Amelia Dugan from Scrabble Scramblers 4H Club. Exhibitor 38, Peyton Dugan from Spring Mills FFA. Exhibitor 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners 4H Club. Exhibitor 15, Emma McCulley from Spring Mills FFA. Exhibitor number 100, Colin Severance from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 83, Brian Van Dyne from Swan Pond 4-H Club. We're still waiting on one, Judge. Class three of non-dairy yearlings, please be making your way to ringside. Class three of non-dairy breeding goats to ringside, please. Another heater that wins this particular class, and I just love that extra good look and presence that she has from the side. Uh, one that's super elegant up front, yet she's still got tremendous amount of power, rib shape, and width to go with it. I think if you want to get critical on that one, when you study that one go as she goes away from you, yeah, she could have span a little bit more width and come a little bit square at the ground, but one that's really, really long, really, really good and correct in the way that she's made. I love a lot of things about that one. The one that's in second is just like our class winner. That one's ultra refined up front. I love how she blends that really long, slender neck into the apex of her shoulder. That one's got meat animal shape as well to her. I just think that one wants to get a little weaker right behind her shoulder. 
maybe not maintain as strong of a top line as that one that wins that particular class, but two really high quality does up here on this front end. The one in third is really good in terms of being really broody bodied. She's got some wit, some substance at the ground as well. Another one that just kind of wants to round off off either ends of her skeleton. The one that's going to be in fourth is really tubular, and I like that. I actually like that slick hair coat on her because when you put your hands on that one, man, oh, man, that one's really upstanding in her rack, really good in her loin, and I think if you mate that one right, pretty her up a little bit because she wants to get really thick-necked, a little bit shorter about her head and her neck as well. I think you can make some really, um, really interesting uh, offspring on down the road. We've got a dapple-fronted one that's really long, correct in our lines and our angles. We get on the three-quarter and right on behind that one, it kind of vanishes. We need to give more substance, more width, and more power to make it up higher in this particular class. I've got another really broody-bodied one in sixth. That's super long-bodied. Honestly, she's almost too long-bodied. Um, not that being too long-bodied is a bad thing, but it almost throws her balance off just a little bit. She wants to get a little bit longer and rounder out of her hip, a little deeper in her chest for my liking as well. The one that's going to be in fifth, I love that show ring presence that that one gives from the side. That one's dead level hipped, really good in the way she blends her spine into the top side of her scapula. She just needs to be a little bit bolder right in behind her heart, give it a little bit more pin width as well. The dapple that's going to be in seventh today is one that you really like from her length, altitude, and growth standpoint. That one just wants to run downhill uh, and just needs to be a little bit more functional in the way that she's put together. Round out the class with that more moderate, smaller one there on the far side. One that's sound, flexible on the go. That one just gives up too much in terms of size, power, and gas to make it higher in the class. Winning your class today would be exhibitor number 120, Garrett Glassford. Second place would be exhibitor 41, Reese Barrett. Third place would be Exhibitor 111, Ella Collis. Fourth place would be Exhibitor 85, Brennan Alt. And fifth place would be Exhibitor 83, Brian Van Dyne. We will ask exhibit, um, Garrett and Reese to return, stay ringside and return for the champion junior doe. Congratulations to all exhibitors. Okay, we are now ready for class three, our non-dairy yearling goats born between August 1st, 2019 and July 31st, 2019. We have six exhibitors in this class. Exhibitor number 85, Brennan Alt from Spring Mills FFA. Exhibitor number 111, Ella Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club. Exhibitor 61, Amelia Dugan from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 38, P. 
Peyton Dugan from Spring Mills FFA, exhibitor 162, Kelsey Payne from Wetumpka 4-H Club, and exhibitor number 70, Bailey Reardon from Musselman FFA. We're waiting on that is your class. To ringside, we need Garrett Glassford with both of your class winners from class one and two. We also need Savannah McDonald, um, the second place from class one, and Reese Barrett, your second place from class two, please. Please bring your goats to ringside. Pick your poison on top, flip-flop them how you like them. I'm going to use the more broody, maternal-oriented, uh, painted-up dough. I just like how wide she is at the ground, and then she's got plenty of dimension and spread up high as well. Yeah, we could level her out of her hip. We could give her a shot more bone underneath to kind of match her mass up high, but I think that one's pretty good and correct in the way that she's made just a real sound, functional type of female. The one that's in second gives you an awfully, awfully good look to her, up-headed, long spined, level in the way that she's made. That one just gets really, really tight right in her heart, really narrow in her pin setting as well. If I could give a shot more mass in those particular areas, I don't think that pair gets as close as it is. The one that's in third is a powerhouse. I tell you what, that one's big chested. I love that one spread in terms of her being really opened up in her cage, really wide at the ground as well. I don't remember her limping. She's kind of wanting to get out here and limp on that back left just a little bit. But I think in terms of her power, mass, and width, that one's definitely undeniable in those particular areas. One that's in fourth is really long-spined, and one that just kind of gets out and goes and travels really, really easy, just wants to get a little bit coarser and rounder off either ends of her skeleton. I like the youthful, attractive one that we have in fifth. I just wish there was more sheer power, mass to match that. She certainly would match up or uh, go up a couple more spaces if she had uh, a little bit more extra gas in the tank. 
The one that's going to round out the class is another one that's really growthy, really long, and I like those. Uh, and where she is in terms of her maturity curve, that back uh, or that uh, left half that she has is a little bit concerning in terms of her teat size and placement. Winning your class today would be exhibitor number 162, Kelsey Payne from Wetumpka 4 H Club. Second place would be Peyton Dugan, exhibitor number 38, Spring Mills 4 H Club. Third would be exhibitor number 111, Ella Collis. Fourth, exhibitor 61, Amelia Dugan. And fifth, exhibitor 85, Brennan Alt. We will be bringing Kelsey and Peyton back for the overall, or excuse me, for the Grand and Reserve champion junior non-dairy goat. Put your hands together and give these ladies a round of applause. <laughs> Attention in the barns, all FFA exhibitors, you do have permission to remove your jackets if you wish. Entering the ring now are your first and second place winners from your first three classes. From our first class, we have Garrett Glassford showing for him since he has two goats in the overall drive. Shelby Silvius will be showing for him. First place out of your second class would also be Garrett Glassford. And we are bringing back Kelsey Payne from our third class. That is the lineup closest to the bleachers. Those three will be competing for your overall, excuse me, grand champion junior non-dairy goat. On the back row, on your far right, we have Savannah McDonald. Sec in the middle, you have your second place winner from class two, which would be Reese Barrett. And then on your far left would be the second place winner out of class three, which would be Peyton Dugan. The Grand Champion Junior Non-Dairy Goat will receive a $25 award, while the Reserve Champion will receive a $10 award. Both awards are sponsored by Nicholas Abereg, Equitable Advisors. I think this uh, lineup here in our Junior Doe division is awfully, awfully impressive from our first and seconds. And, you know, we left plenty of good ones out there in third on down the line as well. But uh, I, I tell you what, there's two individuals out here in my mind uh, that just take things to the next level in terms of their quality look and presence, yet they still have plenty of power mass to go with it. I'm not going to talk about them individually. We broke them down individually. Uh, I think it's been a great, great lineup. Let's give all of our Junior Doe exhibitors a big round of applause. I'll show you my two favorites out here. Your grand and reserve champion, junior non-dairy goat, goes to Garrett Glassford. Garrett, please keep both of those goats at ringside. We're now moving on to our senior non-dairy goat. Our first class for that age group will be class five. These are goats born between August 1st, 2018 and July 31st, 2019. We have five exhibitors in this class. Exhibitor 85, Brennan Alt from Spring Mills FFA. 
Exhibitor number 16, Grant Boyard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 74, Brady Collis from Valley Star 4-H Club. Exhibitor 267, Chloe Craighead from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 37, Paige Knott from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. This is your class, Judge. Will class six non-dairy mature does be coming to ringside, please? Young man's big beast. Uh, we talked about him showing him and show or showing her in showmanship, and uh, I think she holds her own out here. When you study her contemporaries in terms of chest width, being really bold and dimensional in her body, yet still has plenty of power, mass, and look to go with it. Sure, she's got some maturity on her, and she's not the most geeked out in any one particular area, but one that's really broody and maternal in her own right. I like the stoutness and freshness of the one that's actually in second. You touch her and handle her, I think she's probably better in terms of her uh, being more properly hydrated in, uh, than the ones off either ends of her. Got plenty of mass, plenty of width. That one just wants to get a little bit piecier for my liking, wants to get a little bit shorter and jammed up up front wants to fall out in her chest bone just a little bit, but one that's really good in her own right. I like the length, extension, and the front end assembly of this black doe here. I tell you what, that one's probably the best in terms of being youthful and elegant. Uh, I just wish that one was coupled a little bit better in the way she transitions from the top side of her scapula into her rib cage, and she also wants to get a little bit rounder and weaker uh, out of her hip hawk and hind leg posture. Uh, if we could change those things, I think that trop trio gets a little more challenging. I like the youthful look, the correctness of the one that's going to be in fourth today. I just wish that one had a little bit more width to her rib, a little bit more broadness over her top side of her skeleton as well to kind of help enhance her up a couple of notches. We'll round out the class with a really functional, easy feeding type of female that's really long bodied, really correct. I like how her toes go all north. Uh, and I like she's tucked up in her chest bone really, really nicely. That one just doesn't have that show condition or that show ring presence of some of the other ones in front of her. Winning your class today is exhibitor number 74, Brady Collis. Second, 
is exhibitor number 267, Chloe Craighead. I need both of you to stay ringside, please. Third would be exhibitor number 16, Grant Boyard. Fourth, exhibitor 85, Brennan Alt. And fifth, exhibitor number 37, Paige Knott. Our next class is class six, non-dairy, mature does, born after August 1st, 2008. We only have one exhibitor in this class, and that would be Ms. Shelby Silvius from Hedgesville FFA. I'm having a blast with these kids, and, and this female, she wants to show herself off, and you know, it may not be the view that I want, but it's the view that she wants to show us. And <laughs> I tell you what, that's one really broody, really big-backed, really thick-ended type of doe. Maybe not the most purtiest in the way that she's coupled together, but a broody, functional type one. We'll see how she stacks up here in just a second. Congratulations to Shelby Silvius from Hedgesville FFA. Coming back into the ring would be our winner of our class five, Mr. Brady Collis. And coming in, lining up behind him would be second place out of class five, Chloe Craighead. In the goat barn, we need our dairy goat exhibitors to be getting ready, please. And anyone in class one of dairy junior kids can be making their way to ringside, please. The senior doe that won that first class, you know, we talked about her width, her power, and mass, and still being really good and functional in her kind. I like her look and presence from the ringside as well. Studier to some of her contemporaries, yeah, she wants to get a little bit chunkier, wants to fall out there in her breastbone and her front end assembly, but I think one that's uh, undeniable in terms of her power and mass. The one over there that won that last class, we talked about her giving the view that she wants to give. Uh, that one's that one's functional. I actually think that one's probably better in her front end extension, and then the way that she couples that, uh, being a little bit leveler out of her hip and a little better in her chest. Now that one's a little bit harder in terms of her fore rib compared to the two that are on this side of me, uh, but I think one that gives you actually a really good look from the side. We've got this second one over here, talked about her freshness, her power, her mass and width. That one's just not got that really good, cool look and presence from the side. I'm going to keep the two class winners together. The one that won the first class is going to be your champion. The one that won the second class is going to be reserve. Your grand champion senior non-dairy goat goes to Brady Collis, and your reserve champion senior non-dairy goat goes to Shelby Silvius. You two can stay in the ring. We will be bringing back in Garrett Glassford's champion and reserve junior does for our overall winner. So on your left hand side you have your champion junior doe and on the right hand side you have your champion senior doe. I know we went through these fairly quickly, tried to be as efficient as I could and, and get the best look of every single individual. but. Uh, 
you know, I don't ever ask anybody to agree with how I place them, but hopefully I've done a good enough job explaining as to how I selected these livestock and keeping them as consistently together as I can, uh, you know, when you're picking your champions and reserves. And for me, I think there's two others out here uh, that just match up so good. And not just in terms of their presence and their presentation, but just their quality, their width, their power, and their mass. One's just a little bit longer, slightly more elegant than the other. We're going to keep those two does, uh, doe kids together for your champion reserve overall. Your non-dairy goat female of show would go to Garrett Glassford. He receives a $25 award from Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, as well as a banner sponsored by the Colleen Miller family. Reserve champion also goes to Garrett Glassford, receiving a $10 award from Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit and a banner sponsored by Susan and Frank Berner. I neglected to um, announce the awards for your senior non-dairy goat. Your senior non-dairy goat in the previous class got a $25 award sponsored by Susan and Frank Berner, and the reserve champion got a $10 award sponsored by Hilltop Feed, the Poncions. Okay, we are now ready to start our dairy goat portion of the show today. Class one will be dairy junior kids born on or after February 1st, 2021. We have four exhibitors in this class. Exhibitor number 312, Grayson Anderson from Arden 4-H Club. Exhibitor number 87, Caroline Cook from Martinsburg FFA. Exhibitor number 117, Faith Fox from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 326, Jackson Haddock from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. This is your class. <laughs> class three, dairy yearlings, please make your way to ringside. You know, I don't ever claim to be uh, a dairy judge. I know you have to be certified for that. But fun fact, uh, I did actually work for a dairy farm or a dairy goat farm uh, growing up in high school. They had uh, Oberhosleys and they had some La Manchas as well. And uh, so I'm not unfamiliar with it. But again, I'm not going to come out here and say that I'm no expert in dose. And so this is my reasoning for how I place them. I'm going to leave them exactly how they came in in this lineup. And this doe kid. 
that we used to win this class. I just love how refined she is. She's up-headed, super attractive, and you get her out on the go. She maintains such a level and correct top line, really good in her hip and hind leg posture as well. I love her pasterns underneath her as well. Just a lot of really nice, good pieces to that doe kid up front. The dwarf that we're going to use in second, I actually think is a little bit better in the way that she's coupled in from her shoulder and scapula into a more bolder, more three-dimensional rib cage for her breed and for her size. I just think that one maybe wants to get a little bit rounder out of her hip for my liking. I would like to level her out, give her some more length and extension uh, uh, in, her, in her rear coupling, uh, but I think one from her hip forward really is really striking from the side as well. The Alpine, or the Alpine that we're going to have in third is one that really gives you a good look from the profile. She really matches that class winner in terms of being really correct in the way that she's made. I just wish there was more to her. She just wants to get a little more peak and a little more A-frame in the way that she's put together when you view her from the behind. But again, she's very, very young. Keep putting to her. Hopefully some of that maturity and that bulk will come up to her. We're going to round out the class with a really big-bodied, very functional side on my far right. That one just doesn't quite have that show dairy look. Wants to get just a little bit deeper in her chest, a little shorter, rounder out of her hip and hind leg. Winning your class today will be exhibitor number 117, Faith Fox. Second for the class would be Jackson Haddock, exhibitor 326. Please keep both of your goats ringside. Third in the class would be Caroline Cook. And fourth would be Grayson Anderson. Congratulations to all exhibitors. Entering the ring now will be class three, your dairy yearlings, born August 1st, 2019 to July 31st, 2020. We again have four exhibitors in this class. We have a couple exhibitors that need to grab another goat for this class, so that's what the delay is for. Entering the ring, we have exhibitor number 208, Taryn Boyles from Valley Star 4-H Club. Exhibitor number 87, Caroline Cook from Martinsburg FFA. Exhibitor number 117, Faith Fox from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club, and exhibitor number 326, Jackson Haddock from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. This is your class.
the fresh and uh, experimental doe is going to win this particular class. And uh, I just love that front end look that she gives you. Very dairy-like in terms of her head and her neck. Maybe not the best in terms right behind her shoulder or the levelest out of her hip. But then again, she's got a really good mammary system underneath her, really high and tight. I like that teat size and placement she has as well at this stage. The uh, Nigerian Dwarf is going to be second, and I just like how bold and three-dimensional she is in terms of her rib cage. Gives you plenty of good looking from the side, but another one maybe just wants to get a little bit piecier in the way that she's put together. She's also wanting to be a little bit of a booger head, not wanting to get out here and showcase herself off for this young man. Um, the one that's going to, the Alpine that's going to be in third today, one that really like our class winner is really good from the side, and I actually probably think she's the best and the strongest in terms of her top line. I really like her feet and leg structure underneath her as well. You just get on the three-quarter of that one. Need to make her a little bit wider, a little more bold on the top side of her rib cage. Another one that we're going to round out the class with that's very dairy-like, and I love this one in terms of the way that she blends her parts and her pieces from the profile. Another one we just need to give more three-dimensional look from the side, or from behind. Winning our class will be exhibitor number 117, Faith Fox. Second, exhibitor 326, Jackson Haddock. We need both of you to keep your goats in the ring, please. Exhibitor number 87, Caroline Cook was third. And exhibitor 208, Taryn Boyles was fourth. We are now ready for class four, which will be our grand and reserve champion junior dairy goat drive. So we will be bringing back Faith Fox's winner from class one and Jackson Haddock second place from class one. You know, obviously we've got different breeds, different stages of maturity in here for our junior doe selection. Uh, you know, the kid that came out of that first class is one that we talked about just super correct in the way that she's presented. You love the feet and leg structure underneath her as well. I think one that has a really, really bright future ahead of her, young lady. The one that you had that came out and won that second class, really maternal. Again, gives you a good look from the side. Maybe not the best in terms of her top line. And actually, I think if you study her, she maybe wants to hawk in just a little bit as well. Uh, but two really, really nice does. I asked you which one you wanted to choose. You went with that one. I would agree with you. I like that one better. She's going to be your champion today. Grand champion, junior dairy goat, comes out of your class one. Miss Faith Fox, and she will also take your reserve champion junior dairy goat with her yearling doe out of class three. Congratulations. The Junior Dairy Champion Award, uh, $25 award, was sponsored by Smith Naden Bush Insurance, and the Junior Dairy Goat Reserve Champion $10 award was sponsored by Keith and Dawn Pingley and family. Entering the ring now will be Class 5, our Dairy Senior Does, born between August 1st, 2018 and July 31st, 2019. We have three exhibitors in this class. <laughs> Exhibitor 148, Julianne Cook from Tomahawk 4-H Club. Exhibitor 184, Mackenzie Phoebus from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club. 
and exhibitor number 70, Bailey Reardon, excuse me, from Musselman FFA. That is your class, Judge. Class 6, Dairy Mature Does, be making your way to ringside, please. Class 6 to ringside. Young ladies fresh into Alpine is going to win this particular class. And we talked in showmanship how that doe just shows herself off. I mean, I tell you what, that one gives you a really good profile view. Yet that one's still bold and maternal in her rib cage. I like her udder and her median suspensory ligament in this one. I think if you want to get critical on her mammary system, that left side maybe wants to give a little bit lighter than the right side or at least how it feels, but I think one that just puts so many good parts and pieces together, that's a nice way to start. The young lady's crossed up doe on the far side is going to be second. I think she more closely matches our class winner in terms of type and kind being up headed attractive level in the way that she's presented. She maybe just wants to get a little bit not as uh, feminine or attractive as the one that's going to be on the opposite side of the ring of her today, but a really high altitude growthy female. We'll round out the class with one that's really bold and wide and dimensional. That one just is putting a little bit too much condition on for my liking. Wants to fall out in her chest. Wants to get a little bit rounder out of her hip. Winning your class today would be exhibitor number 148, Julianne Cook. Second would be Mackenzie Phoebus. And third, Bailey Reardon. Julianne and Mackenzie, please keep your goats ringside. Entering the ring is class six, your dairy mature does born after August 1st of 2018. We have five exhibitors in this class. Exhibitor number 312, Grayson Anderson from Arden 4-H Club. Exhibitor number 208, Taryn Boyles from Valley Star 4-H Club. Exhibitor number 87, Caroline Cook from Martinsburg FFA. Exhibitor number 326, Jackson Haddock from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 443, from Ian Purdy from Martinsburg FFA. This is your class, Judge. I need the Grand and Reserve Champion Jer Grand and Reserve Champion Junior Dairy Goat Goats from Faith Fox to ringside, please.
Young Ladies Ober Hosley is going to win this particular class. And uh, I think one that's just really good from the side, gives you a nice brood dairy doe character look to her. I like her underline. Uh, particularly what I think spreads her from the remainder of her contemporaries is her mammary system. It's not perfect, but I think in terms of fore udder attachment, how broad she is to her upper rear udder attachment as well, I think that she excels in those particular areas. Obviously, she could be a lot better in terms of her teat size. They kind of want to get a little bit coarser and uneven on either sides, but I think one that just puts the most good pieces together. The one that's going to be in second, from a confirmation standpoint, Maybe a shot better in terms of her top line. I like that one's long level look. I like her underline and how maternal she is. That one just wants to give up, wants to maybe not be quite as bold or as massive or as strong in her median suspensory ligament. The one that's going to, the dwarf that's going to be in third today is one that I really like just from a practicality standpoint. That one's really correct in her feet and leg posture. I like how good she is in terms of her chest and then the way that she blends that into a really bold maternal rib cage. That one just wants to get a little bit more awkward, not quite show off uh, and give us as good a look as those two that are going to be on the other side of the ring. Though, um, uh, the one that we're going to have out in fourth is one that's ultra refined and I really appreciate that. Really super good looking from the side but it all, she almost takes that refinement to an extreme. Wants to be just a little bit too harsher and harder right in behind her heart. And obviously she's got a really pretty youthful tucked up udder underneath her. I just wish that she'd give more at this stage of the game. We'll round out the class with a dwarf that you really like from being really opened up and having a lot of expansion in terms of his midrib, really good, and his underline, but I just wish that one was put together a little bit differently. Comes in too many parts and pieces for my liking. Winning your class today would be exhibitor number 87, Caroline Cook. Second would be Exhibitor 208, Taryn Boyles. Please keep your goats in the ring for your grand champion drive. Rounding out the class, we have third place, Jackson Haddock. Fourth place, Ian Purdy. And fifth place, Grayson Anderson. Entering the ring now would be the first and second place winners from your class five. That would be first place was Julianne Cook. And second place was Mackenzie Phoebus. This is your Grand and Reserve Champion Senior Dairy Goats. I think it's really cool to have this opportunity to do something different. There's not a tremendous amount of opportunities uh, where I come from for 4-H'ers to participate uh, in the dairy goat industry portion of these 4-H projects, which is starting to grow and come around. I actually have a couple of kids that are milking goats themselves because uh, they're interested in it's something that's new and very, very hands-on. So I think it's a really good set of dairy does that we have out here. Um, I think there's one in particular that hit me a little bit harder in her respective class just in the way that she's put together, but most importantly, her teat size, placement, fore udder attachment, rear udder attachment as well. I think she puts a lot of piece, parts and pieces together. The one that came out of that first class is going to be your champion. Your ch grand champion senior dairy goat winner would be Julianne Cook. And your reserve champion senior dairy goat would be Caroline Cook. Both the Grand and Reserve Champion Senior Dairy Goat Awards are sponsored by Misty, Misty Meadows Farms, the Greg Foster family. We are now ready to pick the Dairy Goat Female of Show winners. We are inviting Faith Fox with her Grand and Reserve Junior Dairy Goats to the ring.
This might be even closer than it was in our meat division, but uh, you know we started off with some really good ones in our junior doe division. That one that won that particular uh, uh, class and division is just, I love the side view that she gives you, up-headed, long, level, attractive. Obviously at this stage it's hard for her to compete, you know, or young ones to compete with these older fresh endos, but my goodness, she holds her own in here in terms of quality look and presence from the side. She's in contention for this running, obviously. The one that comes out in this one, the last division, is, is just, the, in my opinion, just like the little one, but she's freshened and she's got a good memory system underneath her. Pick your poison. Like I said the, earlier, I'm no expert. Hopefully I've done a decent enough job in sorting and evaluating and expressing uh, my opinions on these livestock. So let's give all of our dairy exhibitors a big, big round of applause. I'll show you the two that I like the best. Your grand champion dairy female of the show goes to Julianne Cook. And your reserve grand champion female of the show goes to Faith Fox. Your grand champion was sponsored. That's right, put your hands together. Great job, ladies. Your grand champion dairy female of the show was sponsored by Max and Hope Kingery and DC Farms, Dan and Debbie Collis and family. The reserve dairy female of the show, sponsored by Max and Hope Kingery and Joe and Ann Bittery. Class one market goats, be making your way to ringside, please. Okay, this is our first class of market goats, ranging in weight from 44 to 59 pounds. This is our underweight class, which means they did not meet the 60 pound minimum weight to sell Friday night. Our exhibitors in this class would be exhibitor 181, McKaylee Brown from Swan Pond 4-H Club, exhibitor 107, Dirks Brown from Swan Pond 4-H Club, exhibitor 100, Colin Severance from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club, Exhibitor 59, Allison Quintana from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 186, Michael Shane from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 184, Mackenzie Phoebus from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club. Exhibitor 121, Grace Dunham from Back Creek Valley Mountaineers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 179, Maggie Reiner from Southern Cross 4-H Club. Exhibitor 130, Haley McKinney from Spring Mills FFA. And Exhibitor 213, Trent Dunham from Back Creek Valley Mountaineers 4-H Club. This is your class, Judge. Attention in the goat barns. Will all market goat exhibitors please be with your goats? Attention in the goat barns. All market goat exhibitors please be with your goats and ready. We can have class two of the market goats to ringside, please. Class two of market goats to ringside. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce again our judge, Mr. Chris Mackey. Chris is the owner and operator of Team Mackey Livestock, located in Irwin, Tennessee. He, along with his sister and brother-in-law, run a small group of Semitol and Angus cattle in addition to their weather-style ewe flock. Chris was an active 4-H and FFA member and has always had a passion for the livestock and show industries. Chris graduated from the University of Tennessee and was a member of the 2012 Collegiate Livestock Judging Team at UT. Following graduation, he attended North Carolina State as a graduate research and teaching assistant, as well as the coach for the Collegiate Livestock Judging Team. Currently, Chris serves as the County Extension Director for Unicoi County, Tennessee, with a focus in agriculture and 4-H and youth development. Please join me in welcoming Chris.
I understand these didn't quite make weight, but uh, we'll talk about them, tell you how I like them. Uh, the young man's weather on the far side over there is probably the most hydrated and has the most expansion in terms of a center body dimension. Uh, certainly one that you could definitely make a little bit leveler and cooler in his design. Actually, that's what I like about the doe in second. That one gives you an awfully good look from the side. Very up-headed, attractive, long and level. That one just doesn't have near the sheer power and mass as the one that wins the class. The one that's going to be uh, uh, right behind that one you really like in terms of the way that one's coupled. I like this one's front end assembly as well and how good he's uh, angled in terms of his scapula into his forerib. That one just wants to get a little bit plainer in his muscle shape, particularly as we uh, travel down from the upper to the lower portions of his hip and hind leg. The one that's going to be in fourth is one that you really like from his balance and his standpoint from her hip forward. That one just kind of wants to run downhill, get a little bit rounder out of her hip though, unfortunately. We'll round out this top five with one that actually has a really big back shape for her size. Uh, one that actually has some pin width as well. That one just wants to get a little bit coarser and rounder off either ends of her skeleton. Let's give the kids a big round of applause as they exit the ring. Winning class one of your market goats would be Trent Dunham from Back Creek Valley Mountaineers. 4-H Club. Second would be Grace Dunham from Back Creek Valley Mountaineers 4-H Club. Third, Haley McKinney from Spring Mills FFA. Fourth, Mackenzie Phoebus from Hedgesville New Adventures 4-H Club. And fifth, Maggie Reiner from Southern Cross. Congratulations to all these exhibitors. Entering the class now would be your first class of your lightweight market goats. These goats range in weight from 60 to 66 pounds. We have exhibitor number 71, Bo Dugan from Scrabble Scramblers. Exhibitor number 54, Abigail Horn from Hedgesville FFA. And exhibitor 148, Julianne Cook from Tomahawk 4-H Club. This is your class. Attention in the goat barn, attention in the goat barn. All market goat exhibitors need to be with your market goats. All market goat exhibitors, please get with your goats. I'm going to start with the gentleman's slick-headed, painted-up one to win this particular class. And let's be honest, all three of these just need some more bulk and more mass to them. But what this one really excels in his contemporaries is his look and balance from the side. He's really good in his front end assembly. I love how long and level he is down his top and out of his hip. Uh, I just want, I think one that gives you a really, really good look from the side. I think it gets a little bit closer between second and third there. For me, the more traditional headed one is going to uh, secure his win over the black, do uh, the black goat because he's just properly have some more uh, natural mass and upright uh, 
uh, shape to his rack and his loin. I just like that one's lower uh, rear leg assembly as well. The black uh, but that but but but. <laughs> the black uh, weather that we're going to round out the class with is just really loose pelted. Doesn't really give you that good sharp crisp handle to him. But I think one that's plenty bold in terms of his chest has some outward shape and curvature to his rear rib and flank. Winning your class today would be exhibitor number 71, Bo Dugan. Second place, will exhibitor 54, Abigail Horn. And third place, exhibitor 148, Julianne Cook. Bo and Abigail, please keep your goats at ringside. Entering the ring now would be your second group of uh, lightweight market goats. This class ranges in weight from 68 pounds to 72 pounds, and we have four exhibitors. Exhibitor number 87, Caroline Cook from Martinsburg FFA. Exhibitor 164, Corinne Lewis from Hedgesville Superchargers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 62, Anna Grove from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 155, Caitlin Saya. Class three of lightweight market, or excuse me, class four of medium weight market goats. Both groups of class four market goats, please make your way to ringside. I'm actually going to leave them as they came in and starting with this young lady's weather. Uh, I just think that one's so much bolder in his full rib and correlates that with much more spread and feeds out to a bigger loin on that one. I, I just wish that one was probably a little bit neater in terms of the way he puts his neck into his shoulder and be a little bit slender there. And that's where actually I like that red buck or that red weather. I think he's probably the one that's better up front. Uh, he's actually better in terms of his pelt and his hydration. That one just wants to not quite give us a good look, wants to get up underneath himself, get a little bit rounder out of his hip. But I think one that certainly has plenty of body and muscle at this stage in the game. The one that's going to be in third is one that's really long, high altitude, very expansive. We get on the three-quarter view and I'm directly on top of that one. I just need more rear, uh, raw uh, meat animal shape. That one just gets a little more pecked right behind his shoulder, needs a shot more butt to go with him as well. We'll round out the class with one that I actually really like in terms of being really big and opened up in his chest and his heart. I like how round ribbed he is as well. That one just doesn't quite have that show ring look and presence of the ones ahead of him. Winning your class would be exhibitor 155, Caitlin Saya. Second place would be Anna Grove. Both of you ladies need to keep your goats in the ring, please. Third would be Corinne Lewis and fourth, Caroline Cook. Congratulations to the exhibitors. We are now ready for our lightweight division champion drive. Coming back in the ring from the first group of lightweight market goats would be Bo Dugan and Abigail Horn.
Obviously, you get in these lighter weight classes, you don't quite have that maturity, that sheer raw power that you're going to see in maybe some of these older, heavier weight classes. But I think the one that we used to start off that first class uh, holds his own in terms of his look, his balance, and attractiveness. Sure, we need to bulk him up, make him a little bit more manlier, but um, I think one that you really have to appreciate from a side view profile. The one that won that second class is you really like his hydration, his touch and tone. I like his muscularity as well. Maybe not quite the levelest in his design as maybe the one directly behind him, but that's a complete fault-free one that still gives you a good enough look from the side. We're going to use that one for your champion lightweight. Your grand champion lightweight market goat goes to Caitlin Saya. Your reserve champion, also out of that second group, would go to Anna Grove. Congratulations. The lightweight champion and reserve awards are sponsored by Sunset Acres. Caitlin and Anna, please keep your goats nearby for the overall champion drive. We are now ready to start our medium weight market goat. This would be class four. These goats range in weight from 75 to 77 pounds. We have four exhibitors. Exhibitor 106, Destiny Lowe from Watomka 4-H Club. Exhibitor 61, Amelia Dugan from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Exhibitor 120, Garrett Glassford from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. And Exhibitor 83, Brian Van Dines from Swan Pond 4-H Club. This is your class, Judge. I tell you what, the one that wins this class is awfully cool and good looking from the side and you know it goes beyond her color pattern. Uh, not only does she command the most authority, she's the most uniquely put together in terms of having all the bells and whistles but yet still having that sheer raw power mass to go with it. And what I personally love most about this one is just how square and good she is underneath her skeleton as well. Love the feet and leg structure on that one. No perfect one. Could stretch her out just a little bit in her hip, maybe blend her just a little bit right there in her jump muscle ever so slightly, but that's one is highly presented, highly good quality livestock. 
The one that's going to be in second is one that gives you another really good show look from the side. Young man does a nice job of getting this one stuck and presented. I wish this one was a little bit thinner hided because that kind of detracts from his touch and his tone. Uh, and actually, that one probably has a nickel more condition than ones on either side of him. But the way that that one's put together, that one's skeletal build and makeup, that one makes it good livestock as well. The one that we're going to have out in third is one that is super powered up, really bold right behind his shoulder. And I love how he handles and feeds out into a big square loin edge. That's a big, thick-ended rascal as well. I just wish that one was probably a little trendier, wants to get a little bit shorter and jammed up, not only up front, but in terms of his mid-rib and his hip. The one that we're going to round out the class is a really growthy type of goat, one that's got an easy feedability to him. That one just gives up some look, balance, and some pizzazz of the ones ahead of him. Winning your class is Exhibitor 120, Garrett Glassford. Second would be Brian Van Dyne. Third, Destiny Lowe. And fourth, Amelia Dugan. Put your hands together and give them all a round of applause. Garrett and Brian, please keep your goats ringside. Entering the ring now will be your second group of medium weight market goats. These goats range in weight from 79 to 86 pounds. We have exhibitor number 153, Casey Payne from Wetumpka 4-H Club. Exhibitor 67, Jordan Austin from Tomahawk 4-H Club. Exhibitor 162, Kelsey Payne from Wetumpka, excuse me, Wetumpka 4-H Club. Exhibitor 119, Gabriella Emrick from Sulphur Springs 4-H Club. And Exhibitor 205, Savannah McDonald from Wetumpka 4-H Club. <laughs> this is your class. I need all heavyweight market goats to ringside, please. All heavyweight market goats to ringside. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize our fair royalty. We have our 2021 Berkeley County Youth Fair Queen, Miss Caroline Cook, here with us passing out awards. And you've also seen her in the ring showing her goats. Helping out when she has not been here has been second runner up, Miss Hunter Dunham.
it's a shame. It's a shame this young lady's weather's not wanting to cooperate and you know do his part in this project, but. I think one that you really have to appreciate from his terminal incentives, uh, that's probably one of the boldest back, burliest ended uh, goats that we've seen thus far in this particular lineup. I really like his presentation as well. I think one that you could certainly make him stronger and notch leveler right behind his shoulder. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily him fighting the halter if he's just, uh, if he's put together like that, but uh, that's certainly where I want to change him right there behind his shoulder. The one that's going to be in second I really like from a profile standpoint. That one's the taller, longer, more expanded weather that actually probably handles a niche uh, thinner hided than the one that we're going to head and use to win the class. That one just kind of funnels out into his hip and pin set. Maybe you would like to give him a shot more mass at the ground as well. I like the really bold centered one that's going to be in third. Really practical, easy feeding kind, but he kind of takes that to extreme being a little bit heavier in terms of his condition. Certainly would like to freshen him up from a, uh, from a freshness and condition standpoint. We've got two painted up ones out here on this either ends of this class. I think that what sorts this pair is how they're made. And for me, the more painted up and colored up one, I think is a notch leveler and better out of his hip and hind leg structure. The one that's going to round out the class actually has the advantage in terms of his depth of body, maybe even being a little bit more open right behind his full rib. That one just wants to fall out in his chest, get too short and round out of his hip. Winning your class today is exhibitor number 205, Savannah McDonald. Second place is exhibitor number 67, Austin Jordan. You can keep your goats in the ring, please. The other three exhibitors may exit the ring. Ex uh, third place would be Gabriella Emmerich. Fourth place, Kelsey Payne. And fifth place, Casey Payne. We are now ready for our medium weight division grand and reserve champion. Coming back from the first class of medium weight goats would be First place, Garrett, Gla excuse me, Garrett Glassford. And second place, Brian Van Dyne. That painted dough that won that first class, you know, we talked about just being quality livestock, not just in the way that she's built, but her touch, tone, muscularity, all the things that she puts together so well in a, such a great, complete package. I think that's an awfully, awfully good one. The knucklehead that won that second class uh, actually probably may, may, may be just a nickel bit longer in terms of his loin, uh, but I think one that you really have to appreciate also being really muscled up really well in terms of his hydration. He just being a knucklehead, maybe not quite as trendy or as cool as the one that won that first particular class. I think it gets a little bit hairier there for who I'm going to decide for reserve. That one that came out of that second class, um, or the, the, one, the second to the one that won that first class, probably balances up more similarly like the one that's uh, directly in front of her. That one's touch and tone is just not quite at 12 o'clock for my liking. A little bit thicker pelted, a little bit more condition on it. Then you also have the second over there that probably is fresher handling, maybe not quite as sheer power or mass as some of the other ones out here. Pick your poison how you like them. For me, I think there's one heater out here. Again, it gets closer for second. The one that won that first class is going to be your champion middleweight. Your champion medium weight market goat goes to Garrett Glassford. Your reserve champion medium weight market goat goes to Savannah McDonald. Congratulations. Both of the medium weight awards were sponsored by Susan and Frank Berner.
Okay, we are now ready for our heavyweight market goat division. The first class of heavyweight market goats ranges in weight from 88 pounds to 90 pounds. We have three exhibitors in this class. Exhibitor number 79, Brianna Lowe from Hedgesville FFA. Exhibitor number 95, Chloe Sloanacre from Valley Star 4-H Club. And exhibitor number 16, Grant Boyard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. You know, I'll be honest, this is probably the best audience and group of folks I've ever been a part of. The way that y'all, I love it. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome, the way y'all cheer everybody on. The weather that's going to win this particular class, uh, amongst his contemporaries, that's the widest, that's the most muscular, the boldest bodied one, probably the best put together one as well. Is he the trendiest or the coolest or the freshest? Absolutely not. But I just think that's the fault for a complete one in this particular class. Congratulations, young lady. The gentleman's black-headed weather is really long, level, attractive in his look, and I really like the way he gets out and goes. Sure, he wants to be a little bit knucklehead, but just the way that he gets out and reaches off of his front end, less down on an athletic framework, I really appreciate that. Just not enough goat to that one to run and compete with the one that's ahead of him. The round weather that's going, to, or the, the red weather that's going to round out the class is one that you really like from a practicality and usefulness standpoint. Big bodied, he's got plenty of muscle. That one's just really thick necked, really deep and coarse in his chest. Just needs to have a little bit more wow factor to compete with those two ahead of him. Winning your class is exhibitor number 79, Brianna Lowe. Second place, exhibitor number 16, Grant Boyard. And third place would be exhibitor 95, Chloe Sloanacre. Congratulations. Brianna and Grant, keep your goats ringside, please. We're now ready for our second group of heavyweight market goats. We have three exhibitors in this class. Goats range in weight from 92 pounds to 98 pounds. We have exhibitor 157, Kaylee Bittery from Hedgesville FFA. Exhibitor 172, Lillian Doyle from Swan Pond 4-H Club. And exhibitor 58, Alicia Slit from Spring Mills FFA. This is your class. I need the grand and reserve champion lightweight goats to ringside, please. 
ex Grand and Reserve Champion Lightweight and Medium Weight Goats to ringside. Young ladies, Red Need Weather is going to win this class, and not only does he start bolder in his chest and center sternum, but he's also rounder in terms of his rib cage, which allows more dimension and spread up high. I think that's a big ended one as well. You stop and get in planted, he gives you a good enough look from the side. Maybe not quite the best and most has the most wow factor, but just a really good complete weather, young lady. The one that the blonde tan one that we're going to have out in second, I really like how good he is in terms of his uh, hydration to his skin and his texture that he has. That one just wants to get a little bit cheaper in his chest, a little bit rounder out of his hip. The one that's in four, or that's going to be in third is really round and robust in terms of his center body. I would actually like to take some of that natural fear to his rear rib and flank and kind of put that more into his heart as I think he's actually got a little bit too much full, maybe had a little bit too much hay today, wants to make him a look a lot harsher uh, in his heart than what he really is. I think it's a really nice class. Let's give these three young ladies a big round of applause. Winning your class is exhibitor number 157, Kaylee Bittery. Second is Alicia Slit, And third goes to Lillian Doyle. We are now ready for our grand and reserve heavyweight market goat drive. Coming back into the ring from the first class of heavyweight market goats, we have Brianna Lowe and Grant Boyard. You know, sometimes when we get into feeding these heavier weight animals, uh, it's a little bit harder to keep that extra fresh, cr uh, fresh, crisp touch to them. And I think these are kind of flirting with that edge of maybe having a little bit too much cover uh, from my personal standpoint. But um, the one that won that first class, we just talked about him and his contemporary group just being the freshest in that group. And I still think that holds true out here. He's probably the thinner hided one of the class winners that are standing closest to me. He's probably a notch better in the way he's coupled right behind his shoulder. There's just not as much meat animal shape to him as the one that's directly in front of him. But I like the look balance that he gives from the side. The one that won that second class is you have to really appreciate in terms of being really round bodied, really bold centered. I think right now he's kind of wanting to duck down and not give you as good look from the side. But I tell you, when that earlier class, you had him jacked up, he was looking the part. He still handles really, really good. And honestly, he's the bigger back stouter option on this first set of class. So pick your poison. Are you going to go with one that probably has a shot more power or mass and call him good enough? Do you like the one that actually gives you a better look from the side that needs more true meat animal shape? For me, I deem this one good enough in terms of his look and balance, and that's going to be your champion heavyweight. Your 
grand champion heavyweight market goat goes to Kaylee Bittereye from Hedgesville FFA. And your reserve champion heavyweight market goat goes to Brianna Lowe, also from Hedgesville FFA. Congratulations. Your heavyweight awards were sponsored by Glassford Farms. We are now ready for our overall grand and reserve champion market goats. So we are bringing back our winners from classes three, five, and seven. On the row closest to you, on your right, you have your grand champion lightweight, which would be Caitlin Saya. In the middle, we have our grand champion medium weight, Mr. Garrett Glassford. And then on your far right, we have your champion heavyweight, which would be Kaylee Bittereye. On the back row, again on the left side, we have our reserve champion lightweight, Anna Grove. In the middle, on the back row, we have your reserve champion medium weight, Savannah McDonald. And on your far right in the back row, we have your reserve champion heavyweight, Brianna Lowe. Well, I think it's been a great group of kids to work with uh, from a goat exhibitor standpoint. And uh, the quality certainly hasn't dropped off here in this market division. Uh, I'm not going to individually pick apart each particular one. We've already done that in their respective classes and then their respective divisions as well. Uh, you know, hopefully you standing or sitting ringside have been able to kind of correlate and see the type of livestock that I like within each particular class and try to be as consistent as I can evaluating with what's presented in front of us and let me tell you I'm mighty impressed with the livestock here in this particular county but what I'm more impressed with is the great kids that are in this community as well I think you ought to be awfully awfully proud I don't normally talk this much but I'm trying to get my steps in because I only took like 5,000 today so I'm gonna be walking up and down right here just like this um, you're not going to have to hear me talk much more in this. I think there's one individual in my mind that sets himself apart. I think there's one that kind of logically needs to fall in second today. Um, I think it's been an exceptional, exceptional group of kids, top to bottom, the livestock as well. One last time, give all these big kids a round of applause. I'll get your champion in reserve. Your grand champion overall market goat goes to Garrett Glassford, and your reserve champion overall market goat goes to Savannah McDonald. Please put your hands together again for all these great exhibitors. The grand champion market goat will be receiving a $25 award sponsored by the William Kibler Memorial and Carolyn Costello, a trophy sponsored by United Bank, a banner sponsored by Superchargers 4-H Club, and a jacket sponsored by W. Randy Smith. The reserve champion market goat receives a $10 award in honor of Billy Joe and Bonnie, a trophy sponsored by Susan and Frank Burner, a banner sponsored by Golden Rule Farm, Tammy Warren family, and a jacket sponsored by Jefferson Reynolds. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for attending the goat show here at the Berkeley County Fair and a special thank you to our judge, Mr. Chris Mackey, and all the show coordinators.